your team, tell me, buddy. I'm Lewis Cooper. I'm Joel Longman. I'm Chris Lee. I'm John Fisher. I'm uh, We call ourselves an occupancy management system because our hardware sensors and software sensors uh, match all the seating in the library. Uh, we use occupancy sensors for the cupboard, the cubicles, and RFID scanners for the study room. So we all know with uh, exams coming up how crowded the library can get. Uh, and we lose valuable time searching for cubicles and available study rooms. Well, no longer because of study footing, the cubby buddy is here. Uh, our system provides the convenience of knowing occupancy status of the cubicles and availability of study rooms uh, by allowing users to make reservations on our website and uh, allows users to view a automated uh, map of the occupancy status of the couple cubicles. Uh, our system is not only convenient, but it's compact and inexpensive. It includes a interface, uh, a user interface that's connected to our Amazon web server and MySQL database. Uh, users can interact with our software uh, by via our web page that connects to the database and web service. Uh, our occupancy sensor and our RFID scan are two separate uh, independent systems. Uh, they both take advantage of our programmable, of the programmable system ownership that uh, communicates with the cloud. Notice there's a two-way communication on the RFID scanner. Uh, this is how we uh, validate the user identification card. And once it's validated, we send a signal to the uh, uh, unlock and signal sent to the door. Uh, we use two standalone sensors that are both Wi-Fi enabled. Uh, the occupancy sensor uh, consists of a USB camera, a Raspberry Pi 3, <coughs> and a power supply. And our RFID scanner consists of the RSC 522, uh, RFID reader, a Raspberry Pi Zero, a uh, bicolor LED, <coughs> a resistor, and a power supply. Uh, with the RSC 522 interface, uh, we use the header pins on the Raspberry Pi to connect all the components that's required to build this the scanner. Uh, some requirements for the RC522 are the SD and serial data line uh, input that controls the I square C bus and the system clock. Uh, we also use the GPIO pins to connect the power supply uh, directly and the resistor and the diode. Here we have a complete list of the hardware used to uh, build the scanner, to build one scanner. Uh, things to take note is the, we use the bicolor diode for a clean design. Uh, it uses two four currents, 25 milliamps for the green, and 80 milliamps, excuse me, 25 milliamps for the red, and 80 milliamps for the green. Uh, the RC522 RFID reader also uses a 13.56 megahertz uh, frequency. <coughs> which is sufficient enough to read the card at a reasonable distance and also includes the attenuation from the plastic support. So this is a complete list of all the parts required to build one occupancy detector. Notice we have a 1.2 gigahertz Qualcomm processor in the Raspberry Pi uh, 3. This was fast enough for image processing. Uh, the Resolution and frames per second on the USB uh, camera. Those are also uh, overrated, as we'll see later, that uh, the frames per second get bottlenecked. So hardware optimization. The ARM architecture on our Broadcom processor, um, it comes with some features that we were able to enable to increase the speed of our image processing. Those features are the ARM Neon and VFPV3 extensions. Uh, they were designed to accelerate signal processing algorithms like the ones that we use in our applications. The way that we enable them is uh, at compile time with OpenCV. OpenCV includes extensive libraries for computer vision um, that we use in our Python applications. So person detection with OpenCV, we tried a, different, a few different methods uh, and testing with those, uh, background detection, histogram oriented gradients, and neural networks. Background detection, um, 
it's fast, but uh, we get a lot of false positives because it subtracts the frame before it, and so it sees a lot of shadows, light changes. Uh, we trained our own hog with uh, a few hundred images of ourselves sitting in chairs. Uh, the problem with hogs is that they're only good for single orientations. Uh, in our application, we wanted to have cameras in different parts of the room to see different uh, cubicles, so uh, we didn't have a single orientation. Hogs are good for uh, detecting objects with single orientations. So what we wound up doing is going with the neural network, specifically MobileNet. MobileNet is a convolutional neural network that's designed for uh, mobile devices like the Raspberry Pi 3. Uh, MobileNet includes a uh, lightweight classifier, so it's actually stored on the, uh, the memory of the Raspberry Pi. It doesn't have to go to the web to get uh, results in the classification, so it's, it's stored locally. Uh, MobileNet has that classifier for people. The only downfall is, like I said earlier, it bottlenecks our frames per second to about 0 0.5. So these are the different areas of software that we coded uh, to, to complete our system. Two Python applications, one for occupancy sensor, one for RFID scanner. Uh, the client side is a web application for users, and the server side is SQL database code that we use to create the database. And this is the flow of our uh, occupancy detection application that you can't really see that well, but the uh, outside while loop, what it does is it grabs one single frame from the camera, it passes it to the neural network, and once the neural network, uh, it returns some detections, the detections are returned in, uh, in stored in a vector along with their X and Y coordinates. So inside this for loop here, it looks at every detection in that one single frame, and uh, we calculate the middle points of those detections, which are people, um, and uh, based off the X and Y coordinates, and we compare them with the edges of defined cubicles. So that's how we determine if someone's in a cubicle or not, at the middle point between the edges of the cubicle. So at the end of the for loop, just before it goes back, um, it sends an update query with the statuses of all the new uh, uh, cubicles, and then after the for loop completes, it goes back to the beginning of the while where it gets another frame. Uh, there's two controls that we had to implement in this, so uh, if someone's just walking by a cubicle, we didn't want it to just say there's somebody occupied there. So somebody has to be detected in uh, 10 frames in order to be occupied. And then after somebody's already been sitting there, we didn't want it to just say that they left right away. So we put a timer, a five minute timer. So it's not unoccupied unless five minutes have passed. This is the RFID scanner application. The outside while loop, it grabs, uh, well, it waits for an RFID, RFID tag to be read. Once a tag is read, the uh, current hour and time, the current hour and date is read from the operating system. Then we do a select query to the database with that hour and time to get back uh, the tag number for the reservation of who's, who has that reservation. So then that uh, reservation that's returned from the database is compared to the, to the tag number that was matched. If they're equal, then uh, the GPIO pins for the lock and the LED are triggered and at the end, goes back to the beginning of the while loop and waits for more RFID tabs. All right, for our web application, we chose to use HTML and CSS to display the web pages. For the overall flow control, we chose to work with PHP. Uh, for our login verification, we uh, use jQuery, JavaScript for the reservation system, and then Ajax JavaScript for our app. Uh, right here is, a, uh, is our MySQL database entity relationship diagram. On the left, you can see our table for reservations, and on the right, you see the table for users. The arrow shown actually show the relationship between the two tables. This way we're able to verify if a user actually has an account with us or is able to make a reservation at a certain time. And on the bottom is our table for the cubby status. That is sent to the map to show the web updates. Uh, for hosting, we chose to work with Amazon Web Services. In our case, we uh, ran an Elastic Beanstalk instance. This allowed us to upload and deploy our PHP web server with ease. We also chose to work with Amazon Web Services and Elastic Beanstalk because they offered us the option to create a MySQL data. Uh, because we uh, because we actually bought the uh, domain cubbybuddy.us, we had to deal with DNS routing. Uh, for DNS routing, we configured a hosted zone using Route 50, Amazon's Route 53 service, and by doing this, we were able to con uh, configure the server names. Uh, for the test location, we worked in the first floor of the library. We set up a row of four cubicles strategically positioned in order to maximize our actual field of view. This allowed us to really hone in on the accuracy of our, uh, our algorithm with two people in the frame. Uh, for our website, we debugged using PHP MyAdmin because we were able to see our website locally 
and if any changes need to be made, we can make it right there. And uh, for our occupancy detection algorithm, as well as for our RAP scanner, we developed using Linux console. Uh, this is our demonstration of the occupancy detection. In the background, we have our website, and right there is a uh, video feed on Raspberry Pi. I would just like to point out that that frame will actually never be seen by a user. For demonstration purposes, we chose to overlay them together. Uh, as you can see on the cubbies, if you can see that, there are a few lines. Those lines are the bounds that we set, so our algorithm can detect if there's a person in between each cubby. The four cubicles are mapped up to 9, 10, 11 on the website, 9, 10, 11, 12 on the website. And as you can see, 9, 11 are occupied by Joe and myself right now. Uh, in addition, I want to mention that for demonstration purposes, we actually changed the, uh, the light that Joe mentioned earlier to one, so that we are able to see instant updates, uh, as you see on the map. And this is our demonstration of our RFID system. Right here we have, on the left, is in the middle we have a, a, a reservation system, and on the right, our RFID scanner. Joe tried to make a reservation. Uh, no access, once he makes one for Saturday. You see that by making a reservation by clicking the button, he has a reservation <coughs> system. Green light turns on, which indicates the door would unlock. All right, so once our system is installed and ready to go, uh, we use a couple various applications to, uh, to manage them. For our database, we use MySQL Workbench. This allows us to make updates to our database uh, at any time from anywhere. We also use the DNC server on our operating system as well as the viewer on our desktop. This allows us to remote into the system if any problems arise or we need to make any changes. <clears throat> okay, so once we figured out what we wanted to do with our system, we were faced with a tough decision on which sensors to use. So we created a decision matrix with a couple variables including privacy, insulation, and cost. As you can see, these are five of the sensors that we took into account. Uh, we ended up going with the camera because of the low cost and its ability to uh, view multiple cubbies with just that one camera. Right, so our system's communication is Wi-Fi based, which is enabled on the Raspberry Pi N0. We use Wi-Fi because of its uh, convenience. Uh, many establishments already have Wi-Fi networks installed. Um, we kind of veered away from the local area network uh, because of the installation cost and the hassle of installation as well. All right, so we had a couple things in mind for our system uh, if we were to continue with future development. What is the software that would uh, be able to be integrated with existing video camera and surveillance systems? Many establishments have their own camera systems throughout their buildings. Um, our goal would be to make a software that uh, provides our functionality with those camera systems. Um, another one is automated cubicle edge detection. Uh, this would make installation much easier as our system would be able to automatically detect the edges of cubbies to create its own boundaries. On top of that, if that is too much, we would like to create a second-hand software that would allow the technician installing the system to be able to draw boundaries or just an easier way instead of going to the code uh, and doing it um, the way it is done now. Uh, reduction in LiDAR costs as well. We did like uh, LiDAR uh, sensors, as you could see in the previous slide of the decision matrix. Um, but we kind of veered away from it because it is so expensive. So in the future, if the uh, price does reduce, we would like to implement it into our system. Uh, and to expand the market a little bit, we would like to look to make applications for something such as coffee shops or train cars, maybe uh, keep some stats on how many people come in and out of a coffee shop a day. Or if you're waiting on a train platform and you want to see how crowded the car is that's arriving in a couple minutes, uh, you can keep track of those things. <coughs> uh, some market requirements. Uh, as mentioned, um, we are targeting school libraries, but we would like to go to a, a bigger market. Uh, our main goal is efficiency, like most systems. Um, so we're looking to use uh, overall low-cost sensors, but we need to make sure they do get the job done. Uh, so we chose low-resolution cameras because uh, we figured out that our image processing algorithm does not require high resolution, so there's no need to spend the extra money. Uh, we provide a real-time system with a user-friendly front-end display. We want to make sure every user's experience is a good experience and make sure that everyone can use it and it's intuitive. Um, and as mentioned before, we would like to utilize existing networks for easy adaptability because uh, many people already have their own networks. Uh, so here are a couple things that we kept in the back of our mind while designing our system. RFID scanner is enclosed in a plastic casing, so we wanted to make sure that that does not hinder its ability uh, to scan RFID chips. Our programmable system on chip uh, needs constant power, proper ventilation, and a strong network connection to work throughout its lifetime. Um, our image processing algorithms do require a sufficient processor, which is uh, we definitely took it into account when choosing what components to use. 
And uh, one of the main things uh, for our system is we wanted to make sure the applications start on boot up. This is if something gets hung up or there's an issue and we need to restart, we do not want to have to remote in every single time and start those applications. Manually. So in order to ensure that our system can operate seamlessly, we have these system user requirements we abide by. First, we need to create a system user database to interact with our room reservation system. Um, we also need a strong, reliable wireless network connection for our Raspberry Pi to be zero. And we also needed a 120 volt AC power receptacle in order to supply power to our occupancy sensor and our flight scanner. So in order to, to construct our RFID scanner and our occupancy um, we had to purchase some parts and materials, so each part is listed with the corresponding price and the total split cost. So, in order to regulate our system, we have some standards and policies we have to abide by. Our wireless network <coughs> connection is regulated with the 802.11 standard. Um, our Raspberry Pi 3 and 0 draw more than 10 volts, uh, 10 watts of power. So that's regulated by the P1823. And the Article 800 regulates our low voltage wires that supply power to our total system. Also, the privacy of our user surveillance is managed by the Manhattan College Surveillance Policy. Currently, we do have an occupancy detection system at Manhattan College, although it can only be operated in computer stations and it operates by providing status updates based on the login status of each computer, which provides many false negatives and false positives, and it also has to be updated manually. Uh, so Cubby Buddy can be used in various environments because of our uh, person detection algorithm, and it also updates automatically. So to ensure the privacy of our user, none of our images are stored, and our network is guaranteed protected to ensure the privacy of the user's information. So as a summary, HubbyBuddy is an occupancy management system that utilizes strategically placed cameras to provide real updates of the status of the cubbies, as well as um, uh, a room reservation system so users can reserve rooms before going to the library, and a user-friendly website to display all of these So um, we are going to have a few, thank you guys. Yes. Thank you.